We come now to the penultimate message before we close our series on the book of Psalm 23. I hope that you are enjoying or enduring. <laughs> I hope that you, uh, you have memorized Psalm 23 now at least, the first four verses. And uh, next week we will be closing our series and we will be starting a new series hopefully in the next two weeks' time because uh, my preaching on the 23rd and on the 7th, I uh, know, on the 30th of November will be particularly about baptism and church membership, respectively. Okay, this morning we are going to go to Psalm 23, verse 6, the last verse. But before that, let's go on Psalm 23. And can you memorize now? Psalm 23, 1 to 5. Okay, let's murmurize together. <laughs> okay, Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall feel no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Very good. Very good. I hope you remember that not only today but every day because Psalm 23 is... Uh, I will explain later why this is a very beautiful verse. Today we are going to go to the last verse. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Today we will go first to the first part of this verse. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The title of our message today is The Confidence of the Satisfied Soul. <clears throat> when I talk of confidence, confianza, when I talk of confidence, it means that you have something, you, you have an assurance that something will happen in the future and you are sure of it. You are expecting something and anticipating something that is sure to happen. That's what we call as confidence. We call this expectation or confidence, it doesn't matter. But I just would like to dwell on this word, confidence. How many of you had been to Sentosa and had been to this show? The Pirates in 4D show. This is the first 4D show. It used to be 3D, but now it's 4D show. Have you been there? <laughs> now we have the Shrek in the Universal Studios, but this is the first 3D uh, show in Sintosa. Um, you see, this is a 4D show. It means that there is not only an element of length and width, but there is a dimension of depth, you know? When you wear the 3D glasses like this, there is a, set, there is a scene in this show that the pirates stumbled because there was this boy who put some traps to the pirates in this island. And a beehive was disturbed and then this pirate ran away for his life and he was run <laughs> after by, uh, uh, you know, by bees. And one of the bees will go to your face like this. <laughs> and then the, the children will be shouting because it seemed real. And what makes it this 4D is because your seats will jerk and there is a spurt of water in your face. That makes it 4D. It's not only the length, the width, and the, and the depthness, but your seat is moving and then there are spurts of water that, that makes it 4D. Pero nakita ko din na minsan naging 5D. Bakit ba naging 5D? Kasi pag katabi mo ay na-excited, diklikin yung ulo mo. <laughs> Dukul. <laughs> My wife is like that. When she's so excited, be careful because <laughs> madukul ka. Nagayang mm. 5D, you know. What I'm saying is this, that our perception determines our poise in life. What we see determines how we react, how we behave. Let me say that our experiences with God determines our expectations from God. In this psalm, Psalm 23, as we learn from verse 1 down to verse 5, we see here the experiences of David with God, with the shepherd. And because of this, 
nag-change yung paningin ni, ni, ni David sa future. When in fact, in verse 6, this is now future tense. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. This is now not pre present tense. This is future tense. Looking back and what he had experienced with the Lord when he was young until he became a king, he said, Sigurado, ng kabutihan ng Panginoon, ng awa ng Panginoon sa susunod sa akin, habang buhay. Our experiences with God today determines how you look for tomorrow. If you have experienced the goodness and the mercies of God today, no wonder that you are also expectant for a brighter future tomorrow. But if you look at it differently, you interpret the things that are happening in your life today as God is not good, God is not merciful in my life. I, I doubt that you will, be you will be optimistic and positive in your outlook for tomorrow. That's what the devil would like you to do. God wants us, I mean, the devil wants us to doubt the goodness and the mercies of God. Nothing will destroy your life effectively other than this, that when you are going to doubt the character and the nature of God that He is good and merciful. Oh, God is mean to me. Why is it that He gave me this problem? Oh, God is not merciful to me. Why have all these trials? And you interpret this these experiences in your life today and project it and question the nature and the character of God, which is wrong. What happened to you today does not change the nature of God. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, no matter what. God will not be unloving. God will not be unfaithful to you. It's just the way you look at it. We have a wrong interpretation sometimes on the things happening in our lives. That's why our look in the future is affected. Now, this confidence, this expectation determines your conduct, isn't it? Our confidence in God determines our conduct in life. Um, you are looking at a movie, horror movie, or an action-packed movie. Sometimes you are carried away by the actions. And if you just think it's just a movie, why should I be carried away? Because it's just a movie. But some people cannot, cannot separate themselves. They are so immersed in the movie that they can identify with the things happening in the movie. Now, that's why I heard from somebody, a friend, who said that I don't like to see a movie. Why? Because pagkatapos ng sine, iniisip pa rin niya yung anong pinalabas ng sine ng maraming araw. Because he cannot separate himself from his experience in the movie house into his delay experience. And that's how the director would like to do to you. God, I mean, the director would like you to be moved, to identify, to immerse yourself in the movie. And translating it to our life, God is the director of your life. And God wants you to be immersed in His presence, in His promises, that you will be affected, that you will look to your future positively, not just for the sake of having a positive thinking, but because there is a foundation, there is, there is a hope in us. Kung wala tayong pag-asa, wala tayong kumpiyansa. Let me say this, that some people, they look at life in the future as a worst. I don't have a future in my life. But for a Christian who experienced the goodness of his shepherd, will always look with, I think the best is yet to come in my life. Look at, uh, this um, difference, difference of how we look at our lives in the future. Can we really say that my future is the best is yet to come or the worst is yet to come? With God, I hope we can say the best is yet to come. But without God, expect the worst. This verse in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8, Solomon said, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. I hope that come the, the other half of your life, it will become a better half. That's one of our shepherding groups in GLCC, the better half. It's the better half. The end is much better than the beginning. I hope it's not the opposite. I hope that we can say with David in Psalm 27 verse 3, I had painted, unless I believe, to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It's either you are fainting to look forward, 
in the future, or you have faith, you have, you have this fortitude, you are fortified within that, yes, I can see the goodness of the, lo the Lord in the land of the living. And this is my prayer and my hope this morning that you and I will have this courage, you have this confidence that, yes, I know I can see the good things ahead of me in my life. Dalawang bagay lang na ating pag-aralan this morning, the certainty and the persistence of this goodness and mercies of the Lord. But before that, let us see this goodness and mercy of God. What, are, what is goodness and what is mercy? How, how is it defined? Parang pariha lang ito, no? Parang they are, they are just one and the same, but they are not really the same in essence. Sabi pa dyan na ang kabutihan ng Lord at saka ang awa ng Lord ay sumusunod sa atin palagi in the future. Well, well one writer, even Spurgeon said that the shepherd daw may dalawang aso na susunod palagi sa mga tupa. These two aso, they are called goodness and mercy. That's why the sheep are guarded against the predators, against wild animals, because mayroong aso na they are guarding the sheep. They are called goodness and mercy. That's the picture here. But it is a metaphor. This is an analogy na ang presensya ng Panginoon, mayroong katangian ng Diyos, it's His goodness and mercy that will follow us through in this life. We, we are... We are discouraged and we are sometimes, um, well, shall I say, parang, parang naapiktuhan tayo ng negative, um, negatively about this health and wealth and prosperity gospel preachers in nowadays because they gave us a wrong scenario of how we are going to live as a Christian, which is true to his word. Kasi di, di gone overboard na pag nandun ka sa Panginoon, Wala ka ng sakit. Wala ka ng paghihirap. Magmayaman ka. They, gone, they have gone overboard. And they neglect the idea that we could have some sufferings and pain and difficulties in life that's part of our lives. Kaya nga, they will always attribute this pain, this difficulty, this sickness as of the devil. And this is not a plan of God in your life. Because God, your Father, is always a good Father and He intends to give you always the good and the good is always prosperity. Health and wealth. Now, is that what the Bible tells us? I don't think so. Because the Bible tells us that there are times that the Lord allowed testings in your life. Abraham was tested by God. Paul was tested. When in fact, all, all of the apostles suffered death, except John, I believe. They suffered a horrible death for the Lord. And that's what it means to be faithful, I mean, to be, to be prosperous and, well, and wealthy in the Lord. I don't think so. Because we have a different view, a, a biblical view of what is good and what is merciful in this book, in this Bible. Mm -hmm. So what is goodness and mercy? Goodness, generally it means pleasant, favorable wealth or well-being. While mercy is loving kindness and kindness. Some versions call it steadfast love. But let me, let me differentiate. Goodness is receiving something that we don't deserve. Whereas mercy is receiving something, not something that we deserve. So, ang kabutihan ng Panginoon is, is that nakatanggap tayo ng mga bagay na hindi dapat natin matanggap yun. Hindi tayo deserving, hindi tayo karapat dapat matanggap yun. Whereas ang mercy is Dapat makatanggap tan, sana tayo ng ganito sa Panginoon pero hindi niya binigay sa atin. That's mercy. Let me illustrate. I can illustrate goodness and mercy like this father who is teaching his son how to ride a bike. That's one of the amazing things that I can remember about being a father to my children when I taught them how to ride a bike. My children knew how to bike, ride a bike because I taught them when they were very young. Nandiyan ka sa likod, di ba? When you're going to teach your child how to ride a bike, let him ride a bike, and you're there at the back supporting. Pag takbo ng bike, takbo ka rin. Okay? Nagbabantay ka na hindi matumba yung bike, 
ng yung bike may patuloy. Kasi ang bike, this is the... Ang bike, hindi mo magamit pag hindi tumatakbo, di ba? <laughs> hindi pwedeng magamit yung bike kung naka-stationary. Unless you are exercising with a stationary bike. <laughs> the bike can only move if it is pedaled moving forward. Just like the Christian life. Cannot, you cannot stand with when you are just still. You have to move forward. That's, that's a journey. That's why here is a picture of a pilgrim on a journey. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Parang nagbago yung scenario dito as a shepherd, ship relationship to a host and guest relationship. Now he is a pilgrim on his journey. Well, in the Sibayg, may, pag, may, may panahon na aakyat yung or it's a slope and the bike has to you know, go up, uphill. So anong gagawin ng tatay? He is going to push the bike with his son on the bike. That's goodness. Hindi kaya ng bata Sometimes we have problems, we have difficulties, we have, we have um, pressures in life and hindi natin kayanin. But God will give us His goodness that we can move on. He pushed us with His goodness. We receive His grace. And this grace empowers us. This grace enables us that we will be able to do what we cannot do. And we don't deserve these things, but God is a gracious God. The goodness of God is the character that God is showing us favor. He's going to show us what we need, help us in what we need. But there are times also that we are like this, natumba tayo, what will the Father do? By His mercy, hmm, pick up in. May time tayo na lumihis tayo, we sin, we disobeyed God, we rebel against God, but God is merciful. He will pick us up, that's mercy. Instead na paluin tayo, instead na Ipanis tayo, God will pick us up. He withhold His punishment. Or He withhold His pain. Why? Because He is a merciful God. You see the picture here? You see, you see the picture? How many of you fathers here who had experienced um, mountaineering with your, your, your children? You see, when you are going to traverse in a mountain... I, I remember one time that my children will have to, I, the children were ahead of me, you know. And kung may mga cliff na hindi sila kaagyat, I have to push them up, you know. And then may mga cliff na it's so slippery and they will, you know, I have to hold their hand and then lift them up. I was always at the back in order to support them that they can move on forward. And that's the picture of how God showed himself here that he is the good God who will support us when we need him and who is going to lift us up when we fail, we fail him. The goodness and the mercies of God is what David was thinking here. Remember what happened to David. David, as a young boy, he became a shepherd. He helped him protect his flock until the Lord chose him to become the king of Israel. But when he became a king, Saul was so mean to him. Saul thought that he will usurp. He will take the kingdom from him. That's why Saul was so angry at David, trying to kill David. David has to run for his life. And every time those experiences, as he relates in the book of Psalms, in the book of Samuel, in the books of Second Chronicles, makikita natin yung kabutihan ng Panginoon. Hindi siya pinabayaan ng Lord. And these are the experiences of David that gives him, you know, confidence and expectation. Yes, Lord, I know your goodness and your mercy as I experienced this in the past. You are going to Give me this still in, in my future. So ito yung, ito yung kabutihan at yung awa ng Panginoon that will give us assurance that we can look forward with confidence in life. I hope that this will be your assurance this morning. I want you to encourage this morning that you can go back to your respective places, to respective work, whatever the situation, whatever circumstance you are in. You can always expect that God is good and God is merciful. Maski hindi mo makikita sa inyong eksperensya ngayon, sa inyong sirkomstansya ngayon. So firstly, makikita natin that there is a um, crescendo here, you see? Parabang, it's a song, the psalm is a song. It's from melo down to miso, down to fortissimo. It is ascending. It is going to the climax, isn't it? 
That's why I said that Psalm 23 is very important because the nature of God and the character of God is expressed in this chapter. The Lord is my shepherd, and that's Jehovah Rapha, or Ra. Mm. I shall not want, that is Jehovah Jireh. I shall not lack anything, the Lord shall provide. He makes me lie down in green pastures, you know, and he, he laid me into still waters. He gives me peace, Jehovah Shalom. Mm. He restores my soul. This is Jehovah Rapha. The Lord shall heal or restore. He leads me in the path of righteousness for His namesake. That is Jehovah Chidkino, the Lord, our righteousness. He leads us into the path of righteousness. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Jehovah Shama, the Lord is here or the Lord is there. In the presence of His enemies, He said, you Prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You are not my head with all. My cup overflows. This is Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my protector. The Lord is my host. The Lord of hosts. He is my army. The Lord is my banner. So nakikita niyo itong pitong pangalan connected with the word Yahweh or Jehovah is expressed in this psalm by David. As he summed this all, kaya nga sabi niya sa verse 6, Surely, siguradong sigurado, it become now to the crescendo or the fortissimo, the climax of the book of this chapter. Let us see first na being ang kabutihan ng Panginoon at ang awa ng Panginoon is certain. It's being certain. Why is it that we can be confident about the goodness and the mercies of God? Because we are, it is certain. Surely, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Hmm. Napag May isang tao na sabi niya na, I know I can plan and tomorrow I will do this and that. We must have second thought. Because there are, people, there are people in the Bible who said, I can be sure of what will happen to me tomorrow. Like for example, this businessman. This businessman in chapter 4 of James, he said, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, your, as it is you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Whosoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Nagyayabang siya sa kanyang sariling kaalaman. That makes it wrong. You are boasting in your own arrogance or presumptuousness. Beware of presumptuousness. Be, do not presume that I can do this and that in the future because the Lord even said, do not boast for your tomorrow. Another guy, he is a farmer here in Luke chapter 12. And he said to them, take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable saying, the land of a rich man produced plentifully and he took thought to himself, what shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build a larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things you have prepared, whose they will be? Okay. Nakikita natin dito na sa dalawang halimbawa, <clears throat> The businessman and the farmer, they were so presumptuous. They think they can handle their future. They said, you have many foods for many years, so eat, drink, and be merry. You can relax. That's presumptuousness. What makes it wrong is that they plan without God. A certainty, a claim of certainty based on personal strength and wisdom is presumptuousness. That's arrogance. But if a certainty is based on the character and the promise of God, that's confidence. That's real confidence and expectation from the Lord. Our boasting is not on us. Our boasting is who is this God, who is this shepherd who promised to me. Like for example, Paul, he was so sure that he will go to heaven. 
I don't know if you're here this morning and you might feel that those who said, I can be sure to go to heaven, they are proud, they are haughty, they are arrogant. Who can say that you'll go to heaven? You are still here. Nobody can be sure. Yes, nobody can be sure if you are going to trust of your own. Nobody can be sure if you depend on your own strength and wisdom. But if there is a God who became man and promised us that he can bring it to his own place, he can, he can bring us to, to that place he called heaven and believe on his promise, that's not boasting, folks. That's just recognizing a truth and a promise. Like, for example, you are sitting in your seats today. If you are going to say to your friend, you know what? If I sit the whole time here in this seat, I cannot fall to the, to the floor. Are you proud? Nagyayabang ka ba na hindi ako madagdag sa, sa, sa sahig? Nakaupo ako dito sa, sa seat na to at hindi ako madagdag sa sahig. I'm sure of that. Are you proud? You're just stating a reality, right? You're just stating a truth that matiba yung upuan. Pero if I do like this, I'm crouching like this, and I will say to you, you know what? I can stay this forever, and I will not fall to this platform. Now, that's a different story. Kasi yung tuhod ko, hindi na makabasketball ng masyado. Matanda na si Tarzan. How long, can I, how, can, how long can I stay like this and I will not fall to the platform? Not, not so long. Maybe an hour, maybe two hours. Not long. Maybe a few minutes only. Why? Because I cannot be proud. I cannot, I cannot depend on my own strength. When God said, I love you and send my only begotten son to you, that if you believe on him and what he did on that cross, you will be surely go to heaven. You will not go to hell. You have eternal life. We are just depending on his promise, right? It's not bragging. It's just stating a reality. But if you say you can go to heaven by your own strength, you are bragging. That's why the Bible tells us, not of works, lest any man should boast. Hindi sa ating kabutihan para walang isang magyayabang. Kasi hindi natin kayanin, hindi natin pwedeng iligtas yung ating kaluluwa by our own strength, so only by what Jesus did on the cross. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed and unto him against that day. Sigurado ako. And I'm persuaded, I'm convinced. Why? Because of him. Not because of my goodness. Even Sa 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, si Paul ang nag-affirm dito, bakit ba? Kasi po, pag nangako ang Panginoon is always yes and amen. For all the promises of God in Him are yes and in Him amen unto the glory of God by us. Let us depend on the promise of God and that's our certainty, folks. When God promised, that settles it. When God promises us that we will, we will have goodness and mercy all the days of our life, that settles it. You feel it? Maybe not. You see it around you? Maybe not. But can you read it in the scriptures? Yes, you can read it in the scriptures and you can claim it. It, de it does not depend upon your feelings. It depends upon the truthfulness and the testimony of the word of God. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but this book, this word, will never pass away. Even in Numbers 23, verse 19, why is it that the promises of God are sure? Because of the character of God. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither a son of man that he should repent, has he said, and he will not do it. Has he promised and he will not fulfill it? Hindi pwedeng mag, magbago at saka hindi magtutupad ang pangako ng Panginoon. Or else he is not God. Or else he is not eternal and he is not all-powerful. He is not in control over all the affairs of this life. God's promise is, is backed up by His character. God's promise is settled because God is eternal God, sovereign God. He is in control. So that settles it. You know, this promise is so certain, this truth is so certain that David said, I'm sure. And you know what the word sure here? The word sure here can be translated only goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 
That's a very strong adverb. Only. Only ang kabutihan, only ang awa ng Panginoon ang susunod sa akin sa habang buhay. Well, let's go to the next. It's not only being certain, but because it's being persistent. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The word follow here is a strong, aggressive word. It means that somebody is pursuing somebody to catch him. He is not going to relent, but he is going to pursue him until na ma- mahawakan. Yung laro-laro natin na, uh, di ba? Yung laro natin sa Pilipino, tago-tagoan or ano ba? Hanapin ka talaga hanggang makita ka, no? This is the, 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 the thought here is that God will pursue us and He will catch us even though how far we go, the Lord will outrun us. Though how harder we sin, though how harder we fail, God will pursue us. That's the word. Because this word is a military word, it's a hunting word, and it's a judicial word. Pag ang military, tugisin nila yung mga kaaway, they have to search everything to get the enemy. Pag nag-hunting ka, you are going to hunt and be sure that you can, you can you know, may, may, may ano dan, may pray dan. This is a judicial word also. It means that hindi kapayagan na hindi ma, ma, mahuli kung sino yung totoong guilty. The court will pursue the case. Hindi yun pwedeng iwanan. So this, this is something that is very strong in, in, its, in its pursuit to us. How, how the goodness of God and mercy is pictured here. Na talagang no matter how we evade or run away from God, God will be always good and merciful to us. You, are you the product of the goodness and the mercies of God? Have you experienced running away from God and God has overtaken you somehow, somewhere? Kung hindi pa sa kabutihan ng Panginoon, because God is a jealous God. God will leave the 99 in order to find you kung saan ka manahulog, nabangin. You are the ship. You can, be, you can be sure. There is no prayer. There is no craving. There is no point in your life where the Lord, the shepherd, will not find you. The Lord will find you. When I was a, a, stu- um, a young people, I mean, many years ago, we had a conference. We called it Kesi Conference. Our, our preacher was from Davao. And he used this illustration. There was this <clears throat> pastor who preached the gospel to this village, you know, Usudons in the 1960s, 1970s, that they will go to the towns, put a tent meeting, and they will preach in the open air in the poblacion, and people will come to hear the word of God. Mga tent gospel meetings yun. Nag-preach yung pastor, first night, sabi niya, kung saan ka man nagtatago, if you are hiding in the house, God knows that you are there. May isang young people na doon sa bahay, Baka, bakit alam ng Diyos lang dito ako sa bahay? <laughs> Subukan ko next tomorrow. Hmm. Ang praise naman yung pastor, to, narinig niya kasi may trompa, no? Maski nagtatago ka sa nanganiyugan dyan, sa likod ng niyog, nakikita ka rin ng Panginoon, bakit nakita ako ng Panginoon dito rin ako sa niyog? <laughs> Sinubukan pa rin niya yung Lord. Last day, not third day, sabi niya, doon ako tatago mo mismo sa pulpit. Kasi mga pulpit, no, may malaki yung pulpit, may mano doon. Kung talagang makikita ba ng Panginoon ako dito. <laughs> doon siya nagtago, hindi alam ng pastor. Maski saan ka, sa niyog, sa bahay, kung saan ka nakatago, maski sa ilalim ka ng pulpito na to. <laughs> nakikita ka ng Diyos, lumabas siya, pastor. <laughs> I don't know, that's just a true story, but it impressed in my heart that you cannot run and hide away from God. God's goodness and mercy will always follow us wherever we go. Psalm 106, verse 1, it is also said in verse 1 of 107, 118, verse 1, 29, and 136, verse 1. The testimony of the writer is that, Praise ye the Lord, O give thanks unto the Lord, for His good, for His mercy endures forever. He is good and His mercy endures forever. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, I think, and... Most of us love this verse. 
It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Now, as you look at me this morning, I can see that trouble. Why? Because sometimes, your pastor, sabi mo, surely goodness and mercy, but I'm not experiencing really the goodness of God right now. I have problems. I have tr troubles in my life. Let me say this, that ang kabutihan ng Panginoon is not confined on the feelings. See? It's not on the feelings. You go to church not because you want to feel good. Because if you go to church to hear the Word of, God's, the word, word of God preach in this pulpit, just to feel good, you miss the point. We are not here to feel good, but we, know, we want here to, to know what God has to speak to us, whether it's good or not. Kaya nga sabi pa nila, the Word of God is to comfort the uncomfortable or discomforted, and to discomfort those who are comfortable. Because the issue is not about us feeling good, you feeling good, and me feeling good. No. It's for the good that is defined by God. The goodness here is not on our daily grind or our daily experiences. Let me read this statement. God's goodness should not be seen or measured in our daily grinds but on our lifetime goals. Let's go to this familiar verse. Most of you memorize this. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to His purpose. Para sa lahat na nagmamahal ng Panginoon, ito yung assurance, sabi pa ni Paul, that all things work together for good. All things, it means it's inclusive. The big things, the small things, wonderful experiences of life, boring, mundane experiences of life, Pleasant experiences, painful experiences, all things inclusive works together. It means that these things are arranged by God to become interdependent, mutual, for what? For the good. And what is this good thing? So verse 29. For those whom He foreknew, also He predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son. Listen carefully. Ang kabutihan na sinasabi ng Panginoon sa Biblia is not kabutihan that you feel is good, but it's for redemptive goodness. It's for your redemption. God saved you. When you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you have a relationship with the shepherd. You are now his sheep. But God wants you to change. God wants you to be transformed. Redemption does not end by saving you from hell. Redemption is still on the business of transforming us. There is a redemption going on in our lives to be like His Son. Kaya nga, lahat ay kabutihan kasi bahagi yun na imold ka na maging katulad ka kay Kristo. Maging katulad ako kay Kristo. If we look at this as a lifetime goal, everything that happens to us on daily basis, we can look at it like how Paul looked at it. Yes, Lord, everything works together for good. That's how Joseph looked at his experiences in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. During the time of the confrontation, his brothers were worried what will Joseph do to them. But this is what he said. As for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Joseph did not look into that specific action. What was that specific action? Did you remember? Way back, way back in Israel, inutusan si Joseph ng kanyang tatay, anak, dala mo ng pagkain yung mga kapatid mo. Doon sila nagbabantay. Sa, doon sa, sa, sunun, sa wilderness ng mga tupa, ng ating mga flock. Dala ka ng pagkain doon. Pagkita pa ng mga kapatid niya, this is now our chance. Makahiganti tayo ng ating kapati. He's a dreamer. They dug a, a pit. Put Joseph there. Because they want to bury alive Joseph. Joseph was pleading to his brother, Please, pakawalan niyo ko dito. Wala naman kong kasalanan. He pleaded. But as if, it's as if that his brothers did not hear him. 
They were full of anger. They were full of hatred for him. Hindi naawa yung mga kapatid sa kanya. Hindi na tiningnan yun. You see, many of us are like that. What happened to us in the past when we were somebody wronged me, somebody wronged us, we cannot look at it as good because we look at it as like as a specific thing. I can't forget that specific thing that they did to me last time. But look at it from the whole picture. Look at you now. Kaya nga, kung tingnan natin ito in the, as a lifetime goal that I will be like Christ, we can put all the puzzle together in this jigsaw puzzle. This jigsaw puzzle is beautiful. Don't look at it as a specific thing, like Joseph. You meant it for evil, but in the overall plan of God, it's beautiful. God meant it for good. And even in Psalm 119, verse 75, the writer of the Psalms said, I know, O Lord, that your rules are righteous and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Masabi lang ito sa isang tao na faithful ka sa akin, Lord, maski may mga afflictions ako, may mga kahirapan ako, kung tinignan niya yung lifetime goal niya that, yes, Lord, this is for my ultimate lifetime goal that I will be redeemed. I will be transformed like Christ. So all things work together for good to them that love God, to those who are called according to His purpose, and that goodness is to be conformed to the image of His Son. It's a redemptive reason. The good thing is for Jesus, to be like Jesus. So I hope and I pray that this morning, you will look at the plan of God with confidence. Walang mangyari sa buhay ko na hindi bahagi sa kabutihan ng Lord. No matter what. Our confidence in God determines our conduct in life. This confidence, this expectation will either make you, you know, look forward with surety, with certainty, like this shepherd, or this sheep, David. Yes, because I knew my God, I knew He's true, I knew He's faithful, I knew He's always good and He cannot change He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I can trust that all the things that will happen in my life will be for my goodness and He will be merciful for me. But, kung hindi natin tinignan ito from the plan of God, we will always be bitter in our hearts. Because, maging feeling based lang tayo. Nang dito tayo sa nangamdaman, we are just like somebody who said, I just want to go to, to believe on God and para ba ang terms, ng, ating terms ang gusto natin nangyari. Lord, I want to serve you if only you will do this to me. If you are going to do that to me. Sa ating terms. You bless my family, you bless my work, you bless my job, you bless my, my children. Nothing happened that will be bad according to how I think that will be, be good. Sana, Lord, ang mangyari sa pamilya ko. And if it will happen, we always have that doubt and question God's goodness and mercy. Because mali ang ating pagkikita kung ano yung kabutihan na sinasabi ng Lord sa Biblia. Listen, which is more important for us? Is it for our glory? Is it for our honor? Is it for our goodness or the goodness of God's name? We are here not for ourselves. We are here for God. Kaya nga ang rason is always for God's glory, for God's name and honor. May the redemption of God will continue to change us. Even mag-i-evolve tayo na ito yung ating, ating purpose sa, sa buhay natin. Lord, may I decrease and you will increase in my life. May I will be less dishonored. I mean, I will be willing to be dishonored just for me to be honored in my life. That's the goodness that God wants us to to see in this life. That's why when you go back to Psalm 27, verse 13, I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Let us pray. Panginoon, salamat po sa magang ito for this wonderful reminder for us. Lord, it's not easy to receive this truth because sometimes, Lord, we are carried away by our feelings, our emotions. Because by nature, Lord, we want to feel good. We want to 
to just experience what is pleasurable in our hearts. But God wants, God, God you want us to, to, to see the way you want us to see according to your own perspective. You want us to wear your lens so that we will be able to conduct our life with certainty, with confidence, that we can really say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us. Because, Lord, we are confident that our God cannot commit any wrong in my life, cannot commit any mistakes in my life. Whatever happens, Lord, in my life and in our lives, it's not because you are mean, you are merciless, but it's part of your working for the good of our soul, for the good that we become like Christ. So bless this to our hearts. Lord, if ever there is anybody here this morning who, is, who, has, who cannot really say this, surely goodness and mercy, because in the first place, walang kasiguraduhan sa relasyon pas Panginoon sa inyo. I pray, Lord, that you will touch and open that heart in order for him or her to decide to trust Christ into his heart as personal Lord and Savior. And for us Christians, Lord, sana po magbabago ang pagtingin namin, Lord. Because you are our shepherd, we will not want anything. We do not lack anything, Lord. There might be seems, seemingly circumstances that we lack. There are times that it seems for us that we are inadequate, but in you, Lord, the reality is that we do not lack anything. It's part of your plan and purpose for us, and we are confident. Bless this to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.